Hello, I'm Dr. Adina Williams Lawson, 14th President of St. Philip's College. I serve as a commissioner on the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women, appointed by Mayor Ron Nuremberg. And greetings, I'm Cynthia Teniente Matson, President of Texas A&M University in San Antonio. And I'm District 4 representative for Dr. Adriana Rocha Garcia as an appointee on the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women. And we're here tonight to introduce a new segment as part of the first of the series of three episodes around domestic violence, entrepreneurship, and women's health. Our first speaker for entrepreneurship will be my friend, Janie Barrera. Janie Barrera is the founding president and chief executive officer of Lift Fund, established in 1994 in San Antonio as Axion Texas Incorporated. The name of the organization was changed to Lift Fund in 2015. Lift Fund has grown to become one of the largest micro and small business lender in the United States. The nonprofit organization provides loans and management training to enterprises of all kinds, from startups to long established businesses, and operates in the states of Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, New Mexico, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Since its inception, it has distributed more than 16,357 loans, mm -hmm. totaling more than $190 million with an impressive 96% repayment rate. As president and CEO, Ms. Barrera is responsible for the organization's financial management, oversight of its annual budget, and the development of methodology and loan delivery procedures. In particular, she has worked hard to level the financial playing field for entrepreneurs who historically have faced considerable obstacles while seeking the finances they need to start and grow their businesses. Ms. Barrera has dedicated her professional life to helping others. She is a change agent in the field of microfinance and helping small businesses reach their full potential. Ms. Barrena has received nationwide recognition for her accomplishments, including the Small Business Administration Financial Services Advocate of the Year and the Minority Enterprise Development Consortium's Corporate Advocate of the Year. The San Antonio Business Journal listed Ms. Barrera as one of the 20 defining players, people who have helped shape the city, and also named her as one of 2013's legacy leaders. Ms. Barrera has served on many national, state, and local boards, including the Federal Reserve's Board's National Consumer Advisory Council. President Barack Obama appointed Ms. Barrera to the President's Advisory Council on Financial Capability, and she was also named to the Board of Directors for the Federal Reserve of Dallas San Antonio branch. In 2015, she was named the San Antonio Business Hall of Fame. Ms. Barrera began her career as Director of Telecommunications for the Diocese of Corpus Christi in 1977. There, she helped found the area's first nonprofit radio stations, KLUX and KHOY, as well as two television production studios. After completing her MBA at the University of the Incarnate Word, the Corpus Christi native remained in San Antonio, where in 1989, she became marketing director for the U.S. Air Force Morale, Welfare, and Recreation Division, headquartered at Randolph Air Force Base. Thank you for joining us this evening as we kick off this three-part celebration in recognition of Women's History Month. Janie Barrera is the first of three presentations. We know that you will thoroughly enjoy it. And on behalf of Mayor Ron Nuremberg, and the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women, we think that you will enjoy immensely these three-part series. Once again, thank you for joining us, and it has been my pleasure to be with my colleague, yes. Cynthia, as we introduce this series to you this evening. Have a wonderful Women's History Month. Hi, my name is Janie Barrera, and I'm the President and CEO of Lift Fund. Lift Fund is a not-for-profit organization that lends money to small businesses that can't get loans from banks. 
And we are honored to be here today because uh, what a great opportunity to share the story about not only about Lift Fund, but also about the opportunities Lift Fund has for women, for women who own businesses now, and for women that want to start their businesses. So for the next 45 minutes, we're going to be sharing with you stories about Lift Fund, the people that uh, are part of our lives and part of our family, and then how you specifically can benefit from the programs of Lift Fund. And so I've asked our senior loan officer, Alma Valdez Brown, to join me today uh, in helping us share and showcase what are the opportunities here in San Antonio. Alma, you've been with us now 13 years. Congratulations Thank you. Uh, for the service that you provide our community. Um, has it, how does it feel to be serving at Lift Fund now for 13 years? To be 13 years old, wow. <laughs> it's, it's great, it's great. It actually has flown by and I um, absolutely love, and I tell everyone that, I, that when I'm talking about Lift Fund, I love what I do. I love the people that, that come and see us. Um, I love seeing their journey. Um, I love it when the journey ends because that means they may not need us anymore. Um, but I love it when they're at the beginning of their journey. So it's, it's been great working um, at Lift Fund for the last 13 years, hopefully more. Thanks, Alma. Thanks for, for being there. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to mention that I actually have been at Lift Fund 26 years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the first employee uh, that helped start the organization back in 1994. Now we're not only in San Antonio, but we are in uh, 14 states. We serve the poorest communities in our country. We serve from New Mexico all the way down to Florida, the, the colonias in South Texas, uh, the black uh, communities and in, in parishes along the Mississippi River. And so the reason we do our job is because everybody needs a chance. And our role at Lift Fund is to level that financial playing field so that people can then start their business and grow their business. And like Alma says, when she says that we want to you know, end the journey is because we are part of our business model is that we want to lose our best customers. Mm -hmm. We want, uh, you know, in the traditional marketing 101, you're taught keep your best customers because you're putting so much money and effort into that, and which we will talk about because that is best practice. You want to keep your best customers. But in Lift Fund's particular case, we want to build you up so eventually you lose us, you leave us, and you go into, into the traditional financial institutions. 100% of Lift Fund customers are not bankable for whatever reason. It may be because we weren't taught when we were uh, younger about our FICO scores, for example. Our FICO scores run our lives. If you have a high FICO score, you're gonna be able to get credit much easier than if you have a low FICO score. So at Lift Fund, the average FICO score of one of our borrowers is 580. At a, the cutoff at a bank for a FICO score for a business loan is 680. So you can see that there's a big gap there what, even though there is that gap and, and our borrowers are considered high risk, we have a 96% repayment rate. So over the last 26, 27 years that we've been doing this work, we have lent over $400 million, of which 96% of that has been repaid. And it's because our customers are our partners and they're wanting to, uh, to learn more about how to create, how to get a better uh, FICO score and how to provide for their families. So, you know, there's that saying, you, you know, you, you give somebody a fish, they eat for a day. You teach somebody how to fish and they eat for a lifetime. Well, the work that Alma and I do is that we help people buy the pond where they fish. And now they're able to own something and leave a legacy for the next generation. We, you know, we believe that, that you know, this is a way that we can break that cycle of poverty and build assets in families. So we think about the difference between assets and income. Income is what we get when we go to work and we are paid in our paycheck. And we use our income to pay our debts and pay for our food and our shelter and our clothing. We need to have income, but we also need to have assets. And what I mean by assets is the fact that we own something. Like I said, we help people buy the pond where they fish. That is something that we hold on to, that we can have assets. Assets can also be in the form of savings. So by, by having assets, savings, we can then help our families and, and have multi-generational assets 
rather than multi-generational debt. And so Alma and, here are, Alma and I are here today to talk about you know, the best practices mm -hmm. in, in being able to, to acquire those assets. Mm -hmm. And the way we're going to be talking about it is through entrepreneurship and small businesses. So, you know, I, I, uh, I, I want to share a story with you. My earliest memory of wanting to be an entrepreneur, even though I didn't even know what that word meant, was that I wanted something, and so therefore I uh, made it happen. And what I wanted was my a bicycle. Um, so, I don't know, I was probably 10, 11 years old. Uh, I saw those bicycles that had come out, you know, with the banana seats and the high, you know, the handlebars that were high. Mm -hmm. And man, I really wanted that bike. And so I said to my mom, mom, will you buy me that bike? And she says, no, you have an absolutely good bike in the garage. So I thought about it and I said, well, mom, if I raise the money to buy that bike, can I have it? And she said, sure. What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to raffle my old bike. So I went and made myself some raffle tickets. And I went door to door in the neighborhood and sold the raffle tickets. My dad at that time was a uh, bus driver in Corpus Christi. And so I got on the bus with him and rode his route. And as people would come on, I would sell tickets to them. Eventually, I had enough money uh, to buy that bike. And so I, that's my memory. And those of you who are uh, listening and watching today, think about your first memory. What was it that made you say, ha, huh, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to own my own business. Why was that? So I bet, Alma, I bet you you have one of those experiences. Right, what was yeah. your memory of that first time? The of... first time that I, that I came into contact with, with real, an entrepreneur and, and really paid attention to that was a really small business that, that, that was, it was our livelihood. Um, I, we were um, young, probably 10 years old, and um, we would go to a corner grocery shop. It was a very small cor cor uh, grocery shop and our parents would give us a couple dollars and we'd go and buy candy of course and chips. But we would all go, you know, my brothers and my cousins and go to the same little grocery store um, probably once a day. And it was a couple that owned it and they were wonderful. We learned about money because we had to pay them and they'd give us our change back. So that was a very educational for us. But, but just in, in continuing to go to that shop, I learned that it was just them too. This was their livelihood. When one was sick, they had to close their doors. And here we are wanting our candy, but we had to wait. Uh, and, and so, and, and I noticed too, they had to talk about, they talked about inventory. They talked about their rent uh, because it was just them too that, that, that uh, owned this business and had to take care of it. Um, and so that was my first memory of, of visiting and really paying attention mm -hmm. to entrepreneurship and to small business owners um, because truly it was their livelihood. This, this was how they, they could uh, buy groceries for themselves. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my mother's mother had a tiendita in Laredo, Texas, and so a similar experience. There mm -hmm. was a neighborhood mm -hmm. um, sh you know, shop that people would go to, and I remember, too, being going there in the summertime and being on the other side of the counter. Mm -hmm. You were on the front side, right? Mm -hmm. So I was mm -hmm. on the side. And those days, uh, they would uh, buy in quantity and sell just certain numbers, right? So if you right. wanted to come in and buy, like, soap or tobacco or whatever, you just handed them. So people came to the counter, and we would ha go out in the, in, into the back part of the store and, and bring things up. So, yeah, I think, you know, being an entrepreneur is something that you either like or you don't like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I know I've been talking, to, when I talk to customers, they said, I want to be, you know, my own boss. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't realize it's a 24-7 right. job. Right. So unless you really, really want to do that, you know, forget it, right? <laughs> and the other piece I, I know that, you know, we're going to be talking about is that whole idea of financial literacy mm -hmm. and knowing uh, what you have and what you don't have. Mm -hmm. um, because my parents, uh, after my dad finished being a bus driver, for 20 years they had a Mexican restaurant in uh, Corpus. And actually, that was my first paying job was as being a waitress in that in that restaurant. And uh, after 20 years of hard work, mm -hmm. they were good at their um, with their customers and their food, but they were terrible at finances. They would rely on their, you know, their bookkeeper who really wasn't doing a good job. So after 20 years, they ended up with nothing, mm -hmm. no um, nothing but their Social Security, uh, and had to live off of that right mm -hmm. until the end of their lives. So that's one of the things that I'm so passionate about with Left Fund is that we educate people 
on the, the right way of running a business right. so that, again, we have those assets. Right. And I bet you you see that in your customers Absolutely. too, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, I see the, the ones that come unprepared. They, they say, I, I, just what you said, I want to start a business because I want to be my own boss. Uh, I want to stop working so much, yeah. <laughs> right, at this <laughs> no. job that I'm working. Well, it's, it's a lot of work. And so um, it's our opportunity to, to help them because, uh, as you mentioned, Lift Fund is here to help and support. And not only do we offer the loans, but we also offer those support services, those consulting and business advising services. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, what got us Lift Fund to here, right, because... You know, we all know about banks, and we talk, and we know that banks provide capital. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But banks are regulated, right. and they cannot do these kinds of loans. They have to fit a certain box. Right. So, you know, Lift Fund has created a box as well, yes. uh, but we can be a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. uh, because we want to create a, a place where where our customers have met that box and are getting ready to get out of our box and go into of traditional financial institutions box. And so some of the lessons learned over these years um, that at Lift Fund is that we've had, like I said earlier, we have a 96% repayment rate. One of the reasons we know that is, one thing that is important is that the customer, the borrower has to have skin in the game. What I mean by that is that they have to put something into that business or they're not gonna pay you back. And we have a lot of kinds of examples that that, uh, that we can share, but I'm going to share one in particular, is that, yes, banks are always going to want to have um, collateral, and meaning, meaning if for some reason you cannot pay this loan, we have that collateral. In some cases, it can be a car, at the, you know, or um, at, at the bank it could be if you have savings, they will hold on to your savings uh, as, as you, as, to, to, uh, so that you can borrow that money. Well, at Lift Fund, we're not a bank. Uh, we're not a, a financial institution with depositors. We are a CDFI, a Community Development Financial Institution. So we rely on investments and donations to make these loans. So Lift Fund literally borrows money from banks or individuals, pays the interest to that bank or individual, and then we use that money to make the loans at interest, and then it's paid back, and we can then pay back our investors. So we have to be very good stewards of our dollars. And so we've put this box that we've created in such a way that it's less stringent than a bank, but stringent enough that our customer knows that they have to pay us back. It is not a grant program. Lift Fund provides loans to small businesses that cannot get loans from the traditional banks. And when I say about you know having skin in the game, we're talking about um, collateral, right? So. Um, I, I would say in the first 10 years of Lift Fund, we were in the laboratory stage. What works, what doesn't work, let's experiment here and there. So at one point, we actually, uh, we were down in, in uh, San Juan, Texas, in the Colonias, which is unincorporated areas, no zoning. So um, this, the, one, the woman, the entrepreneur, had her home, and then in the front part of her, uh, of her property, she had her restaurant. She also had some goats grazing uh, along the side of her house. So uh, we took goats as the collateral. And I went to go visit her a few months later, and I asked, where are the goats? I don't see them around. And she says, well, um, I took them to be slaughtered, and they were part of, they were on the menu uh, uh, last week. And I went, oh my gosh. So um, note to self, go back. We will not take livestock, livestock right. as collateral. Mm -hmm. I'm walking, this is um, you know a few years ago, I'm walking by your desk because we take, don't right. you take pictures? Yes, yes. Of, of all our, the collateral, right? right People that right. may have some, give us some example and then I want to finish the story, but collateral could be other things too, right. not it only It could goes. be your business equipment. Mm -hmm. It could be a vehicle mm -hmm. with clear title, something you're going to buy with a loan that's business related. Those yeah. are the typical things. So you take pictures of them, I right? I take pictures, right. So I'm walking by her desk and I say, Alma, because it was a picture on her monitor of a goat. Yes. And I said, Alma, you know that we don't take <laughs> livestock. Right. Uh, as collateral, and she goes, Janie, you said, Janie, don't worry about it. It's the land where the goat right. is uh, standing. And the goat happened to be so cute, I needed to take a picture of it. <laughs> so there you go. So, uh, right. you know, land's not going to move, right? right? So that was right. that was good collateral. And mm -hmm. that was an interesting business, though, wasn't it? Yes. He, he bought goats. It's a goat farmer. Goat mm -hmm. farmer, right? Mm -hmm. 
and uh, didn't he have a contract with the state? Bear County. With mm -hmm. Old Wild mm -hmm. with Bear County. Yeah. So he would yeah. take his goats and put them on county land and mm -hmm. they would do their business and right. then he'd corral them right and then take them to another place. So right. we right. have all sorts of Stories. interesting <laughs> businesses yes, in, yes. Um, in, in San Antonio and Bear mm -hmm. County. So what's another story that comes to mind of a business that you've helped? Gosh, there are so many. Having been here 13 years, and um, I can think of a lady who um, has a home health care company, and so she really cares for her business owner, uh, sorry, her residents. She cares for her residents a lot, and so she's very careful about who um, who she lets in uh, in her new residence, right, and uh, in the to stay at the at the state home, and her focus is veteran business owners. Mm -hmm. um, but being so careful that translated into her credit, and you talked about this, she was very careful with her credit, and so she came to us and said, "I think I only need like ten thousand dollars," and I said to her, "You know, your credit is really good. Um, first of all, did you try have a conversation with your bank?" And she did but they weren't interested in the industry. They said, we can't do any home health care businesses at this time. And so um, I said, you know, you could qualify for more. Is there, could you use more because we've got this special loan fund um, through the city of San Antonio? Uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, and so she ended up taking a, a 20, a double, $20,000. Mm -hmm. So she could buy more equipment for inside the home, refrigerators and freezers because she, they prepare meals. Uh, and she was gonna hire a part-time cook and so um, this was a case where she didn't know, you know, some people don't know what in what position they are with their credit. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so what we ended up using for collateral was the assets inside, mm -hmm. including those freezers and those coolers and all of that equipment mm -hmm. that she was going to use mm -hmm. in the kitchen for collateral. We used all that for yeah. collateral. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these, it's all, I, I'm always uplifted mm -hmm. uh, about with, stories about our customers and what they want to do and how they want to serve. You know, I, I can think of another, um, well, customer, the gentleman here in, in San Antonio who has a daycare, stu the study hall. Uh -huh. And uh, he was able to not only pay us off, but he's increased, you know, he's opened up a couple of more. Mm -hmm. So people, once they once they get started, that's all they need is that yeah. chance to yeah. get started. Absolutely. And then, go If ahead. I can add one story mm -hmm. too, the, uh, there's a gentleman that um, he was leasing for probably about 10 years and finally had an opportunity to buy uh, the property that his um, auto mechanic business was uh, operating out of. And um, through saving money and also business increasing, he called me recently and said that he was able to help pay for his uh, child's college wow. education, right? Yeah. So that is another success story for us That's is right. that you know, paid it forward. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, Maria's restaurant, for example, has mm -hmm. been in the newspapers uh, recently because mm -hmm. you know she has great fideo and tortilla gorditas and so on. on well, she's on Ogalito Street, and she same same thing. She'd been leasing for many right. many many years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then is she one of your customers? Yes. Yeah, yes. so she was able to purchase right, right her building, yep. uh, and and in a good time too because they're doing all sorts of construction there on the creek, and right. we're going to be able to have those bicycle trails and. It's a, it's a great position. At the end of the day, in. she'll be the a proud owner of this building versus mm -hmm. having leased it for many years. That's right. She doesn't have an asset. One of the things that we haven't talked about in it, uh, about Lift Fund is that, you know, we're open to everybody mm -hmm. that is not bankable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, it just happens, though, that traditionally the folks that are not bankable, our communities that are not bankable, are women, mm -hmm. minorities, minorities right? so veterans at times, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so you know, statistically, what we have at Lift Fund is over 80% mm -hmm. of our portfolio uh, is with uh, minority, minority small business mm -hmm. owners. Mm -hmm. Almost f half mm -hmm. are women-owned businesses, mm -hmm. um, and about I don't know about 15% or so are veterans. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we f I feel very proud for our organization that we're helping people that are not right. traditionally helped at mm -hmm. the financial institutions. And again, it's not because the financial institution doesn't want to work with them. It's because of the box and the, regula exactly. the regulatory things, mm -hmm. all based on that FICO score. So maybe what we should do, uh, Alma, is kind of jump into um, the requirements for our sure. loans sure. and so on. Um, and as we do that, and we've got some slides to, to share with you, 
And um, the first slide that we have to share with you, the audience, is the, is the support here in San Antonio. I've been talking about, um, you know, over uh, the time at Lift Fund, the millions and millions of dollars that we've done uh, in, in loans. But specifically for women entrepreneurs in Bear County, we've helped um, 4,000 small business loans, which equates to almost $35 million. So there's a lot of dollars uh, being uh, funded and, and revolved around, uh, around the loan fund for Lift Fund. Mm -hmm. The next slide is an example of one of these customers that actually uh, did not need a loan. So talk about her, sure, yeah. because she actually didn't need a loan. She just needed she, technical She's assistance. not a loan client. So mm -hmm. um, she is a uh, business, our women's business center client. Lika has been operating her business, I think for now, maybe seven or eight years. Um, she She's an esthetician by trade and she established this wonderful line, I'm a client, mm -hmm. <laughs> of um, uh, spa products and also aromatherapy products and uh, all natural, chemical free. And uh, she uh, has taken advantage of our Women's Business Center. She's come to the workshops when we were doing them in person. She's attended our women's, um, what is it called? Women's Business Accelerator Program. And that's a program that helped uh, business owners, they were already in business, and just really launched them to the next level. Uh, and she's also been through our Business Opportunities Academy, and that was a program that we have so that she can get connected with how to do business with other uh, local and state and government a uh, agencies. Because uh, she's 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 a great example of a small business owner that 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 thinks ahead and uh, thinks big, right? Why not just, you know, in other words, not just stay here in San Antonio, but let's look at opportunities for. Um, state and local yeah uh, and, and with, government. with the internet right now exactly. it's easy yeah. to be easier I should right say. yeah her business is um, in the weeds and so and she's online she's a lot of online sales and like I said I'm a big fan of, of her uh, products, products yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about the lift fund solutions because um, we've been talking about the technical assistance for her but let's talk a little bit about the loans as well mm -hmm. so tell, talk about the business lending piece right so um, we do offer small business loans and we have some specific uh, disaster relief programs that are through um, through the uh, through the city of San Antonio through SBA and so we we do have some COVID disaster relief programs okay. we're also an SBA lender so we have uh, loan products small micro loans all the way up to our 7a and 504 loan pro programs for someone purchasing their their real estate building Mm -hmm. So we'll go specifically into those products sure. in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, you've talked about the education piece through yes. um, the different, we're going to be, I guess, we can go to the, to the next slide. Sure. Um, that yeah. we talk about our business support services, which is the Women's Business Center, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Liftoff, mm -hmm. and Launch SA. Yes. So um, even though Women's Business Center, it's not it's only just Women's, women's business, business Center, right. but it's, open to everyone it is and it's it's per, to provide that technical assistance right 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 so through our women's business center we offer free business advising um, everything's virtual now mm -hmm. but we have wonderful workshops webinars that we offer and we have um, also and by the way the women's business center is partly funded by the SBA mm -hmm. uh, so it is uh, a technical assistance program through um, the SBA um, but the workshops and all of the information is on the website lifefund.com we do have one specific program of the Women's Business Center, which again is open to men and women. That is a uh, COVID resiliency program. Mm -hmm. And we have a wonderful team member who every Tuesday has an open hour. And so through a registering, you can call in and get your questions answered about any of the disaster relief programs, or maybe you need help. Maybe you're in business um, and you want to increase your sales. She can help you with that. So we, we, cool. we're definitely there to help through this mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that differ from Launch SA? Launch SA is um, a program that is um, part of the City of San Antonio program. Mm -hmm. um, Launch SA uh, is business support. Um, we call it our one-stop shop where you can go in and you can just have an idea. I think I want to start this crap business. Uh, you know, everyone tells me I'm making earrings and they're beautiful and maybe I should go into business. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to start. Launch SA would really help you and point you in the right direction. Uh, Launch SA has, has some programs and um, I'll talk about them now. We have uh, One Million Cups, which uh, they meet, uh, I think it's weekly. 
uh, virtual and uh, two business owners will pitch their idea and then you get some wonderful feedback from the community. They also have one that we're taking registrations now called Break Fast and Launch and this is a culinary accelerator by which you may be great at baking your cakes, Janie. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mirror just fell off. You may be great <laughs> at uh, like. <laughs> baking your cakes, but maybe you don't know the business side of it. And you mentioned this with your parents. Mm -hmm. So this accelerator program walks you through the business side. Mm -hmm. And we bring in experts, people that have been there, and they talk about their experience. And there's a really com great community mm -hmm. with this food business uh, mm -hmm. uh, that they, you know, you can um, uh, form a, a partnership with other mm -hmm. business owners that are, that are mm -hmm. um, forming a, a food business. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we have Liftoff. Do you wanna talk about Liftoff? Sure, so Liftoff mm -hmm. is um, a, a building that's located on the east side. It's on Hackberry Street, mm -hmm. on the corner of Hackberry and Highland where we um, have office space that's available. So you've been working at home. We all have been working from home a lot mm -hmm. lately, but you're thinking, okay, I need to venture out and rent a little cubicle. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a space that you can be your office with a bunch of other folks as well. Um, and, it, and it's uh, below market rent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have uh, a conference room and um, you know, mail. A lot of people, when they start their business, they want to have an address. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect place to right. be. 24-hour access, mm -hmm. printer service, fax service. Uh, and parking. Parking, yeah. absolutely parking. And mm -hmm. close to a lot of food, mm -hmm. food places <laughs> on Hackberry Street. Right. So let's mm -hmm. move specifically into the programs that we offer in terms of loans. Mm -hmm. uh, as you stated, um, Alma, we make loans from $1,000 up to a half a million dollars, depending on your needs. We also um, uh, have the SBA 504 program, mm -hmm. which can go up to you know, 10, 15 million dollars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's start with the micro first, and, um, and I'll Absolutely. let you take that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we are an SBA lender, as I mentioned earlier. We have this one program called an SBA micro loan. That one caps at $20,000, and um, you get a lot of business support through this loan, because once you take the loan and you accept it, uh, you have to also accept that we're going to be reaching out to you quarterly. And so we're making phone calls, we're emailing you, we're checking in through this loan program. Uh, again, this one caps at $20,000. And um, uh, recently the SBA has um, given some assistance with some of the loan program, excuse me, payments, payments for right. this, this particular program. So it, it, it's beneficial. Um, so people getting a micro loan program mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, if you qualify and there's still funding left, we're going to see that. But right now, um, SBA will pay up to three months, I believe. It's actually five months. Now, five I months, think. okay, mm -hmm. for uh, of payments. Yes. So you take out a SBA micro loan mm -hmm. at Lift Fund mm -hmm. for the first five payments. The SBA. SBA is paying for it. That's right. So it's great working capital, and yes. you don't have to worry about that. Right. Until, it's not a deferment. Until, the payments aren't going to be required to be paid right. at the end of the loan. It's SBA is making your payments for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So another SBA program would be the 7A, mm -hmm. the Community Advantage Program. Right. And that loan can go up to $250,000 yes. uh, for working capital mm -hmm. um, and, um, and and pretty much it's it's for you to do, uh, for you to grow your business, right? right? Right. It can be for a startup business mm -hmm. or for someone who's growing their business. Uh, as long as it is a for-profit mm -hmm. business, then we can consider it under the SBA 7A, capping at 250000 as you mentioned. And I think that there are some payment um, benefits here as well through the SBA as well. well right now mm -hmm. because of COVID yes. and the stimulus money that can be coming. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's on the community advantage. So we've talked about a loan up to 20000 then we have loans up to 250000 and then we have a COVID-19 or uh, EDA, EDA. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, loan, and that is for here for San Antonio, and mm -hmm. those loans are up to 250000 uh, $250, mm -hmm. The difference between the 7A and the, not, not to be too technical here, but between the two programs is the interest rates that we're offering, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So on the SBA 7A Community Advantage, the interest rate is eight and a half, mm -hmm. and with the EDA, COVID EDA, it's three and a half mm -hmm. and fixed. So, mm -hmm. uh, and it can be used for working capital yes. as well. Yes. So it just depends on your needs is what we're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, our loan, Alma and our right. loan officers, We'll, we'll offer all of these products, but let's figure out which one is best for you. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And then here specifically, we are blessed in the yes. city of San Antonio because 
um, through city council and the mayor, they've approved a grant that comes to lift fund so that you pay how much in interest? Zero. Zero. Mm -hmm. So the, the city has provided lift fund a grant that we can offer loans up to $50,000 uh, at zero percent interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a deal! Yeah, and you know, the, but again, our our council and our uh, our mayor believes in small business, mm -hmm. and uh, our, you know, and, and the economic development department of, of the city of San Antonio. So we're very fortunate to mm -hmm. be able to have a grant like that for small businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other program. It, this one oh. is for startup and existing businesses as well. As so well. you can be a startup business. And uh, if you are with, located within the city limits of San Antonio, then obviously that's going to be our first um, option that we want to try is the city of San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes. And then we are also, Lift Fund is also uh, administering the PPP loans, mm -hmm. the Payment That's Protection right. Plan pr uh, loans. So those of you who are already in business, mm -hmm. e if you got a PPP loan uh, first round and now you want a second round, uh, Lift Fund can help or go back to the initial uh, financial institution that provided your first PPP loan. If you didn't get a PPP loan in the first round, you're still eligible to apply in this round right now. So again, if you would like a, a payment protection plan, which means that you were affected by COVID, at least 25% of your uh, business was affected by COVID, you can qualify for this to help with your payments, uh, to salaries for your employees. More information at the liftfund.org. Liftfund.com. Mm -hmm. Liftfund.com, uh, liftfund.com. Mm -hmm. sorry is our uh, website that has um, all of these information right. as well. Right, right, yeah. On, uh, and if I can just add on, on the, the website, liftfund.com, you're gonna have the, app, the link for applying for the PPP, for applying for these other loan programs, and even an, uh, a request for an appointment mm -hmm. with uh, one of our business counselors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the city has been, again, trying to help small businesses and are, have provided grants in the mm -hmm. past too. Mm -hmm. So there could be a click on there That's if right. those are available. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So now let's really dive in mm -hmm. into, all right, we, we talked about the products and the services that Lift Fund offers. Now let's give some tips on what is important when you're applying and mm -hmm. when you're trying to um, start or grow your business. So tell us a little sure. bit about the tips. Yeah, Thomas. absolutely. You know, we're a lender and we do have our criteria, just as JD said, these are loans that have to be paid back. And so we do have our box, but it's a more flexible box. Uh, and so in order for us to qualify someone for a uh, small business loan, you have to meet criteria. And so my recommendation is to call us, to call us and have a phone conversation with us so that we can go over what those cri that criteria is and ask you specifically about your plan for the business, what you're, how much you're needing. We'll talk about credit because all of that is going to um, really um, help us to, to figure out if we can consider this loan. So we do have criteria. We look at credit. We look at your collateral that Janie mentioned earlier. We look at your cash flow. We want to make sure you can pay us back. Um, and your commitment, your business plan if you're a startup, all of that we talk about. And if you're not ready, then we meet again when you're ready. And if it takes more than two conversations, it takes more than that, and that's happened before, mm -hmm. that's perfectly okay. If you need help, Maybe you need help because you have no idea where your credit is. Through our Women's Business Center, we can help you uh, and go over your credit report and give you a better idea as to whether it's possible for a loan. We can help you with a business plan, too. All right. So if you can't help them directly because people are not ready, you're going to mm -hmm. suggest that they go directly to the Women's Business Center or Launch SA right. to get prepared mm -hmm. to be able Absolutely. to move forward. Absolutely. And if someone comes to us and they don't need a loan, they just came because they heard that we were great mm -hmm. uh, and maybe they need help with how to get certifications, right? Then we'll refer them out, refer, excuse me, refer them out to another group. Maybe we'll refer them to PTAC or to the SBDC, someone who is going to specifically help them with certifications if we can't do it. That's so right. um, yeah, we, we have a, a really great business community the, in San yeah, Antonio. The, the ecosystem here in San it's Antonio wonderful. is wonderful it in is. terms of uh, you know being connected with yeah. how we can help all yeah. the way around. Absolutely. So let's talk about startups. What do you require? Yeah, so for startups, you need to have relevant experience in the business that you're starting. I always tell people this, that um, I may like eating donuts. <laughs> <laughs> And I may one day wake up, right? Oh, I want a donut shop. But if I've never 
worked at one or owned one or has, you know, my family's never owned one, then it's going to be pretty difficult for Lift Fund to consider a loan to you. So experience is really important. If you really want to start a business and it's a different industry that you've ever, ever been in, we recommend that you do get some experience in that industry, whatever that means to you, but just some experience. And um, as a startup, we do require a secondary income and that you have skin in the game. We would require a 20% injection. So if I know that I need $10,000 to start my business, then 2000 minimum has to come from me, from my savings, money that I'm going to inject, and I would ask Liffon for 8000 mm -hmm. That's how that would work. Mm -hmm. Great. So, you know, it's it, when you, I love that example. You love to eat donuts, but <laughs> you've never actually worked in a donut shop, right. right? So go work in a donut shop first. You know, we've actually had experience, yep. too, where customers um, just grew up in that business. Or, you know, they, they never owned the business, but they worked there. Right. And then the um, owner decided, you know what, I want to retire. Would you like to buy the business? Mm -hmm. The owner shows him or her the, the uh, financials mm -hmm. that we in turn are looking at. Lift on looks at it and said, that's a profitable business. Right. So even though that person has not owned a business, they've had that relevant experience, right. there's an, a, a, a good business there because mm -hmm. the financials show it, we'd be happy to lend the money for them to buy that business right. and, and keep that economy and keep that money going. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. So uh, process now, what, I mean, you're not going to get a loan overnight, right? Right. right Why? Right. Well, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> we have a um, wonderful website with our online application. Uh, and so if someone is interested and they're ready, if they, they just want to get that process started, they would start with an online application. A couple days later, they're getting a phone call back from a loan officer or a loan processor. And we're going over the application. It says here this. It says here that. It says you need this. Uh, and we're actually going over their credit report at that time with them. And we're, we're determining whether it's something that we can consider or not. And if so, we then issue a, lo a list of documents that we need. So we don't really need anything up front, but the documents will come after. Um, once we have a completed loan package, what we call, we then send it to an underwriter who, uh, they're located here in San Antonio, and they would review it, make a decision, and if the loan's approved, we're then uh, making the appointment so that we can close a loan mm -hmm. with, the, with the applicant. So do I have to have a bank account to get a loan? You, um, the recommendation is yes. And many people, that's a great point, have a personal bank account. Mm -hmm. And they're using that personal bank account for their small business. We recommend and have a conversation with that, that mm -hmm. applicant that they do open up a business bank account, that mm -hmm. they separate. Because as they grow their business, we need to see what is business and what is not business, right? Mm -hmm. And so just because you don't have a, um, a bank account just yet a doesn't mean that you account. yeah mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you cannot apply you can mm -hmm. but we're going to recommend that you open one up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because in a lot of our underwriting we actually do ask you for your personal mm -hmm. information too because that business may be so young that it's not right. generating enough but as we look into your personal stuff you do have the capacity to pay on that right. loan and mm -hmm. so you know that's again the difference between lift fund and a bank a bank cannot do that, mm -hmm. cannot look at other sources of revenue right. uh, to pay that loan. Yeah, and if I can go back and just say mm -hmm. that if someone is not tech savvy, maybe they're not comfortable on the computer and they just say, how else can I apply? Is the online application the only way that I can apply? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no. We do have a paper application that they can come pick up from our office or we can email or even mail to them and they would fill that out. The process just takes a little bit longer but it's just the same. We mm -hmm. will review that application and, and actually enter it onto the, to, to our website. So we, we can help those that are not quite ready for an online application. Yeah, so you know, I'm all, also if you go to our website, you're gonna see Espanol. You click right. on Espanol and everything that we've been talking here is also gonna be in Spanish. The yes. application is in Spanish, the process is in Spanish. So feel free, either way, uh, we'll be able to, uh, mm -hmm. to assist you in, in that small business. So. Let's go, I mean, we're kind of running out of time, so mm -hmm. I think we have about f four or five minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So again, let's talk about the actual programs that we have are sure. the technical assistance pieces mm -hmm. uh, that we offer. If you're not quite ready for the, for the, for the loan portion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but if you think you're ready for the loan portion, we have loans from $1,000 mm -hmm. up to, and we talked about the micro loan that mm -hmm. goes up to 20,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
And then go ahead and talk about the other three products. The SBA, mm -hmm. uh, 7A, which is what we call our community advantage. And this is a loan up to $250,000. Uh, then we have the um, COVID-19 EDA up to $250,000 with a lower interest rate of 3.5%. And then finally, the, the not really finally, but one of the last ones, uh, the wonderful program through the city of San Antonio, which is at a 0% interest rate loan. And then finally, the PPP loan. We, we do have the Paycheck Protection Program loan through our website. So um, upcoming events, we're going to, we have a slide that, that hopefully will come up and, and talks about the e events that we're having at the Women's Business Center and at um, uh, Launch SA. Right. Always, you know, these, these events are constantly going on, yes. especially now virtually. Yes. You know, I was doing a report for our board of directors. Again, you know, Lift Fund is a not-for-profit organization. So I'm the CEO of the organization, but I've got 14 Board, uh, we've got 14 board members, 14 bosses that, mm -hmm. we, that we report to, to make sure that we're transparent and making sure that we're able to, you know, um, share in our community what we've done. I have to put a pitch in here about Lift Fund. Uh, and, uh, uh, we, uh, we recently got a very generous donation from McKinsey Scott. Uh, McKinsey Scott has um, uh, given Lift Fund a, a $10 million uh, gift, mm -hmm. a donation. And I'm proud to say it, it was because of our transparency. It's because we work with minority and women-owned businesses. It's because we're trying to level that financial field. So she did a lot of her due diligence, a lot of homework, and saw that Lift Fund is an organization that says that does what it says it's going to do. So by her making a donation, she knew directly where that money was going to go to. And it's going to hardworking men and women who want entrepreneurship in their lives and see small businesses as a way to build assets. When we started this conversation today, mm -hmm. it was about assets. That's the most important thing that we can have is have something to own it so that we don't lose it. And we teach people how to own something and then we teach people that they have to, what they have to do to keep it and be able to give that asset to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So. Would you close us out, um, Ama, by sharing the story of um, Keila Neighbors and her sure. family? Sure, yeah. So uh, Keila came to us. Uh, Keila has a, a business, and I actually met her, believe it or not, at a farmer's market. Mm -hmm. She was selling, uh, you know, under a canopy and was selling her products, and she has some natural soaps, creams. Um, she's got some other bath products that she sells, mm -hmm. and I was really interested in uh, that it was natural, and so in meeting her just that one time, I learned about why she created a business, and I told her about Lift Fund, uh, and so she came and, and got a small business loan from us, and is now today, this was about maybe six, seven years ago, today she has a storefront. She's located on Wurzbach, and um, she has a storefront, and she has a great online um, shop as well that she's selling, and so she is growing her business and building assets for her family. Mm -hmm. And she started her business because her child, right, yes. had very bad allergies. That's right. And so she started making her own soaps, mm -hmm. and her friends and family say, you need to put that on the market. Absolutely. And six years later, she's got a storefront yes. and a great online presence. Right. So we know she's a, you know, these are examples, real examples of people that have started with nothing mm -hmm. and have created, you know, their legacy mm -hmm. that they're going to, but it's not, and not because it was luck. It's a combination, okay, being in the right place at the right time, but hard, hard work right. of being able to manage all yeah. of that. And Janie, I want to just add too really quickly that in when I'm closing the loans mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of our borrowers are learning about how we help them. Mm -hmm. They're thankful, and there's many borrowers that actually become donors wow. at the time of closing their, yeah. their, their loan. So they're paying it forward, and, and that, that, I absolutely love that when that happens. Thank you, Alma, mm -hmm. and for sharing that. That's absolutely right. Can, that everybody seems to be, well, you know, wanting to pay forward, mm -hmm. and we are blessed to be able to do that. So not only do our customers when they are successful or are uh, helping Lift Fund, but even our employees, um, over 80% of our own employees uh, mm -hmm. donate to, mm -hmm. to Lift Fund. Mm -hmm. So it's very rewarding to be in this kind of work. So in closing, if you want more information, please go uh, to our website. Uh, it is liftfund.com, L-I-F as in Frank, T as in Tom, uh, fund.com. And uh, we are uh, at your service to be able to provide the tools that you need 
to start and to grow your business. Alma, thank you so much That's for really being my partner Jane. today and mm -hmm. sharing this information. And thank you too for working at Lifland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm.